Welcome to the first home video assignment. You will be required to perform these six tasks. A two-handed square knot, two-handed slip knot, one-handed square knot, one-handed slip knot, how to salvage an air knot, and finally an instrument tie. You should demonstrate proficiency in these basic skills, which include making sure you, ha you have a correct working distance from your knot, using gathering maneuver to manipulate the length of the suture so that they're optimal, laying down the knot with your forefinger, crossing your hands correctly on square knots, and having a smooth recovery in between knots. Also remember that there is a time limit and air knots will not be tolerated. Please do not submit performances that do not meet both of these requirements. Two-handed square knot, 30 second time limit. You will be tying six knots in this exercise. The goal will be to tie a correct square knot, which means you need to alternate crossing your hands on every other throw, and also to avoid an air knot. The key to the air knot and not having an air knot is steady but light tension in between knots, especially between the first and the second knot where the unraveling usually occurs. Two-handed slip knot, 30 second time limit. You'll be tying six slip knots or half hitches, they're also called. Uh, the goal of the exercise will be to make sure you don't get an air knot. This is a more forgiving knot, meaning that if the first knot unravels, you can always slip it down with the second one. Uh, the hand that's holding the post, the flip, flipping the knot, the left hand in this picture, should not move very much in space to maintain stable, correct working distance. One-handed square knot, 30-second time limit. You'll be tying six knots. This is a one-handed technique for square knots. In this video clip, I want you to notice how both hands move in space when you tie a square knot. This is required in order for you to be able to cross on each alternate knot to lay the knot down flat and correctly. Compare this to the next clip or the clip before this where the slip knots are tied. One hand slip knot, time limit 30 seconds. You need to tie six throws and compare this to the prior video in which square knots were tied where both hands move in space. In this case, the hand holding the post end of the suture remains relatively stable in space. This allows for light, steady tension without excessive pulling on the threads. And this is the same for a two-hand technique slip knot as well. Salvaging an air knot, 30 second time limit. This is a very useful technique in the operating room. Should you run into an air knot, you can recover by using this technique. The first knot you lay down and then purposely bounce to create an air knot. After that, you need to tumble the knot into a slip configuration in order to be able to cinch the knot down securely. And then on top of that, you can put additional square knots. Instrument tie, 45 second time limit. When you do an instrument tie, make sure that you have a short tail of about an inch or so, which makes the tying much easier. Also, put the fingers in the rings of the needle driver as this makes locking and unlocking the thread easier. We typically use a surgeon's knot on the first knot, which is an extra loop that helps to prevent unraveling between the first and second knot. Also note how we grasp the suture with our thumb and forefinger, which allows us to use the outer aspect of our hand to direct and control the tension on the suture. There's often a reluctance for learners to cross their hands when tying square knots. This is perceived as being awkward and actually does feel awkward in many cases and they are erroneously discouraged to properly cross their hands which often results in a tumbling of the knot and actually a slip knot when they are trying to tie a square knot. This video demonstrates two different ways to cross properly. 
The first is where you use the fingertips of your uh, forefinger, which can feel awkward because the elbows will be out and away from your body. It does, however, work in cases where you are tying in a deeper hole. The second method uses the volar aspect of the forefinger where you hook the suture and use the back of the forefinger to actually cinch the knot. And this is what we've been using on these uh, example videos. This works particularly well for uh, knots at the surface uh, because you can maintain a relatively neutral body position with your arms resting at your side. For more difficulty, you can use a one-inch Penrose drain shown here. It makes it much more difficult to keep the first knot secure when tying the second one. This is an excellent option for learners who are advanced and looking for greater challenges. An alternate way to avoid an air knot and bouncing is to apply no tension in between the knots. In this case, instead of a light steady tension, you essentially apply very, very minimal tension, which keeps the knot from unraveling.